Hey y'all, this is Whitney, and welcome back to another episode of Spastic Chatter. If you're new here, Spastic Chatter is a platform meant to feature those in the cerebral palsy community, and I get together with individuals with CP, like myself, to have an uncensored chat, if you will, about what it's like living with this type of disability. And for this episode, I have with me Bree, and she kind of has a unique story that I'm very interested to uh, chat with her about. She has CP, and she was recently diagnosed with another disability, MS, um, multiple sclerosis. So uh, before we get into the conversation, I'd love for Brigitte to introduce herself. So take it away, Brigitte. Yeah, um, my name is Brigitte. I live in Ohio. Um, I'm married. I'm in my 40s. Um, I've lived my life with CP up until now, which I've been telling people I added some more initials to my to my title of having CP. Um, I now have MS, which I've technically been only officially diagnosed for a year. So it's a whole new journey that I'm on. Yeah, I, I bet. So take me to the... Like, take me back to the point where you first um, noticed symptoms. I'm not, like, were you, did you associate them or, like, with CP or, like, did you, did you immediately know that they were, that they were different? Well, um, different? for a while, I, I was actually experiencing everything since um, 2018. I started noticing, like, a bunch of weird things happening, and at first I thought it was, basically just aging with CP. I didn't, you know, just weird things started happening and I'm like, this isn't right. So I started making like a whole bunch of different appointments, cardiology, neurology, um, psychology to figure out if it was anxiety related or some other medical, whatever. And no one could really figure it out. So, um, that's kind of, you know, I had symptoms like normal MS symptoms. Now that I look at what the typical MS symptoms are, um, everything lined up. So, so um, I'm curious. Uh, did uh, were your like doctors like understanding of like do they do they just immediately go do they immediately go to your CP like as a like as the as the reason for all of this or were they like do they like were they like understanding of like of like your symptoms like you know what i mean because i yeah, i kind I of like doctors like... would immediately go to the to the primary diagnosis and not want to and not want to explore more yeah i originally i felt like i was blown off so i felt like i had to basically be louder and be more on point and you know basically make sure that they were understanding like part of me felt like they must have thought I was like a hypochondriac or something or like I was making it up so I you know um it just kind of I had to like force it so once people started noticing what I was telling them for a while they kind of um expect you know accepted it that it wasn't just cp but it took a lot of um there is people out there with cp that have ms but it's extremely rare so i don't think people know how to do it because yeah. they're like oh well you just have brain damage so obviously any like lesions on your mri are just probably based on your original damage. Like, there's no way for them to figure out what's new and what's old. So that was part of the difficulty. Right, because cerebral palsy is a brain, is a brain injury. So, like, I, I, kudos for you, to you for, like, advocating for yourself and making sure, like, yeah. making sure that you stand up to your doctor and be like, no, this isn't right. I know my body, like, I know something's, not not right um so like being diagnosed with uh two disabilities how 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 has that like impacted 
your mental health because I think that I think that's important to kind of touch on because you lived your life well, well you you lived your life into your into your forties with one disability and then all of a sudden you have another you have another one that you have to like deal with. So how is well I'm trying that? I'll try and be as transparent and um as open as possible. Um my mental health is barely taken like a roller coaster ride. Like sometimes I'll be like, you know, grateful that you know, I'm here and not everything is going well as far as like, okay, I got good doctors now. Everything is lined up. Like I have, you know, everything is checked, but it's just a lot to take in. Like this is a whole new life. And so, you know, this wasn't on my, on my radar. So I don't, I, I'm one of those people that don't like surprises. I don't like to live with, you know, going by the seat of my pants so yeah. um i've had a lot of you know ups and downs and but um my faith helps me a lot and helps me get through i'm very grateful you know to god and my family and my friends so that's great that you have that mindset i'm i'm, I'm also curious as you're i was like i was like you're you're talking i'm like brainstorming like all these questions because it's it's not it's a rare it's a rare uh, occasion, so like my brain is like, like just uh, thinking of all these questions. But I'm curious. Um, how, uh, does I'm curious if if uh, your CP is like kind of like exas exa your symptoms of CP exacerbated? Yeah, exacerbated because of the MS and like vi vice versa. Do, has that has that has that happened? Have you noticed it? Um, actually, no, like part of the symptoms of MX are kind of overlapping. So I would see the extreme, like say, like for one symptom, um, I'm extremely stiff. Well, obviously with CP, if you have spastic quadriplegia like me, you're stiff all the time anyway. But if you're super stiff and that's not normally your norm for whatever then you know that that is not the normal so you know that that is ms so i'm trying to figure out all the time like okay put this in the category what is this but i would say that my cp is basically not doing anything so thank goodness like the only thing that's happening right now is the ms so i can take cp out of the you know the equation basically yeah and like i know i don't know i don't know if you're aware of of this but i'm not and i'm not a and i'm not a medical professional so i'm not like pushing anything i'm just talking from experience and yeah i know i have a um back foot pump and i i yeah. know i have a friend that has ms that has a back foot pump, a back foot pump as well um so that there, there is like correlation between, like, uh, you were kind of, and you were, like, you might have, like, you mentioned about the spasticity and the stiffness. There is correlation between, um, MS and cerebral palsy. Like, like the kind of, there's so much, some, there's some of the treatments, like, sort of over, overlap. Right. If that makes right. sense. Um. Yeah. Awesome. And I know that you reached out to me saying saying that you wanted to start a podcast um, for the related related to disability advocacy in some way. Um, do you want to do you want to talk about like your reason why you wanted to start a podcast and like what your future goals are, are there? Yeah, I don't really know. Um, I really just like to be an advocate. I've always had a bit of an advocating spirit for people and wanting to be the voice. Like if you're nervous, if you don't know what to say or what to think, um, I'm more than happy to do that for someone or be supportive for someone. Um, but I feel like, especially right now, it's like a limbo where you don't really know where to put yourself. Are you a person with CP, a person with MS, like which side of the coin 
am I hugging hugging more close to right now? And I would say that because it's new and scary and different that I'm hugging closer to the MS because I don't know much about that. But, you know, the CP will always be a part of me. So I feel like there's a lot of things that I can address with a simple, not a simple podcast, but just a way to like get out there for people. Yeah, it's a way to connect and share um, not only not only your experiences, but like like um, a podcast has so many has so many avenues. Uh, they can yeah. they can they can be used. Um, uh, now that we now that we talked about like your your dual diagnosis, um, I kind of. I kind of want to. I kind of wanted to open up to some more to more of a lighthearted uh, topic before we before we close out. What what do you what what do you like to do for fun, Marie? Um, basically, I like to you know, basically I go shopping or I'll go to um sightseeing or I go to concerts sometimes or any type of event or I love to plan parties and. That kind of thing. Um, just right. simple adventures to complicated adventures. Yeah, so. I like I like hearing that. I'm sure I'm sure uh, having some time to like not think about it. Even since since your since your MS is like a new diagnosis, like having that time to, to like just take for yourself and like do like hobbies that you like or like hang out with your friends and family Mm -hmm. i'm sure that's very um beneficial uh for for your for your mental health and things that we talked about the the, um during this episode but uh at the end of every episode brie we i ask my uh i ask my guests if they have any advice for those watching that might be in similar situations at themselves so do you uh, do you have any advice for those um i would say basically keep fighting but also um know what your goals are and make sure that you're keeping an eye and you're going straight for the goal that you're trying to reach awesome and where can uh, people follow you on social media brief um just facebook um Bree Jones Hoagland is my name on there. I'm trying to um get more into like creating a group or and I'm trying to get more active on Instagram. Um so I need to get up on that, but basically Facebook is the best place. Awesome. I will put that in the description so people can I connect with you and check you out and um Again, thank you, Brie, for being a guest on Spastic Chatter. I really enjoyed talking with you. And if you're watching this and you want to be a guest um, on the show, feel free to reach out to me wherever you see this, uh, wherever you see this video, or if you're listening to the podcast. Um, and check back, check back uh, periodically for new episodes of Spastic Chatter. And thanks for um, listening. Bye.